During the wild and booming time from the mid-1930s to the mid-50s, Harold's Club Casino in Reno, Nevada was the largest, most profitable in the world. But then a slow but steady decline took hold in Reno and Harold's. Harold and Raymond I. Pappy Smith, along with Harold's brother, Raymond A. Smith, were the driving forces behind the unlikely success of Harold's Club that they started on a shoestring. Harold was born in Denver, Colorado on February 23, 1910. Pappy ran games and traveling circuses and at boardwalks and fairs. He preferred the slapper, a roulette-style game with prizes on each peg slot. Harold Smith was bright, but unmotivated as a child, and while his mother imagined a fine education for her son and bought him a violin and expensive lessons, the parents' marriage dissolved, especially with Harold accompanying Dad on trips to run bingo and roulette games in the crazy 30s. Rio Nido and Guerneville in California were safe havens, especially with the overture of Bones Remmer. But the Smiths ended up in jail when they crossed into Modesto. Changes had to be made. Nevada adopted open gaming in 1931, and the small cowboy town of Reno was doing just fine. The bank club was the king, with the Riverside running a close second. Other clubs around town included the Dog House, Ship and Bottle, Rex, Haymaker, the Wine House, and the Reno Club. Reno was seen as hell on wheels, and not a nice place by most of the country, but people flocked, and the Smith Brothers opened a tiny casino next to the Reno Club on Virginia Street in June of 1935. They had exactly two slot machines. Their only other income was a giant flasher roulette wheel. Players in one of 36 seats had their own betting area for their pennies, and the eight-foot wheel was flashed in a giant wall-sized mirror. While the club named after him slogged along, Harold took his profits to bars and casinos around town. His luck at craps was good, better at poker, but his drinking, that was a highlight. It was prolific. He was a party of one or twenty, all by himself. Pappy soon joined the boys in their adventures in their own casino, and they bought the building and expanded when the club next door closed. They had a 10-cent blackjack, but Harold lamented that some women were now playing, and when they lost their cash, some of them would walk into Douglas Alley to find a man with 50 cents worth of lust. Hookers down the street charged $5. As gaming boomed in Reno around the Second World War, Harold's dominated wagering from the common man. They had hundreds of paste slot machines, a poker room, a sports book, which was supplied by Bugsy Siegel's Transamerica Racewire, plus craps, roulette, faro, high-low, and blackjack. Marketing helped Harold's boom with 2,300 billboards worldwide, each proclaiming Harold's club or bust and colorful depictions of cowboy characters rushing to get to Harold's. Harold's Club Casino generously designated scholarships at the University of Reno. And then the tide began to turn. Harold was happily married, rich, having a time of his life. He was a partier. He loved to walk across the street to play craps, returning to his own club, and taking rolls of coins in bags back to neighboring casinos whenever his luck was lousy. That was pretty often. As his marriage disintegrated, he also lost longtime friend, partier, and gambler Eddie Sahadi, who owned the country club at Lake Tahoe. He spent months in the St. Mary's Hospital psychiatric ward soon after, and was soon required to get shots directly into his eyeballs to treat macular degeneration and blinding headaches. While pondering his club's future, the family partners agreed to build a new tower with a showroom called the Fun Room, atop the seventh floor. However, because of the expansion, Harold struggled. The expansion only included a modest gaming area, and it couldn't support the staffing, much less the added infrastructure, even with the showroom and a fancy restaurant, especially with other casinos in town like the Mapes and Riverside offering fancy hotel rooms. In the mid-60s, 
the partners were forced to sell their Virginia Street properties for $16 million to a New York holding company and lease back the casino. It was a crushing blow, especially to Harold, who had seen his percentage of the company sliced down several times as he frittered away his fortune gambling and got divorced. Pappy Smith passed away in 1967 after having his responsibilities reduced over the years, and Harold, too, was taking a backseat to his company managers. But fortunately or unfortunately, the end was nearer than Harold ever thought. Harris' property next door boasted a brand new casino and a towering hotel that opened in 1969, while Harold's club income wilted. As it became more difficult to compete on any level with Harris and the prima donna across the street, an unlikely suitor arrived in town. Well, not really, just as a disembodied voice on the telephone. Howard Hughes was interested in Harold's club, and Harold Smith and the family was interested. After purchasing seven casinos in Las Vegas, the Hughes Summa Corporation bought Harold's club for $11.5 million in 1971. Jesse Beck, who still held the rights to casino space inside Harold's club, also profited from the sale, eventually getting several million from Hughes, which was enough to buy the Riverside Casino down the street and call it our own. To the Summa Corporation's credit, they wanted to expand Harold's Club, but they built a multi-story parking lot across the railroad tracks from the property instead of a hotel, banking heavily on purchasing the Palace Club behind them on Center Street in the near future. Unfortunately for the U Summa Corporation, the Palace Club held on for a decade. And when the Palace closed in 1979, Harris managed to finagle just the right bid for the property, leaving Harold's with a prime location on Virginia and Commercial Row, permanently with no hotel. Afterward, the club slowly drifted into obscurity. Although I love playing poker in the refurbished casino, they did things that continually killed their business. They took the Keno area and moved it twice. They rearranged the table games and moved slot machines seemingly haphazardly. They put poker in a small area below the arches of the mezzanine behind the escalator, which I loved. But then they moved it to the mezzanine in 1983. Then they closed the room. Then they reopened it in the building next door, where it lasted just another year. While Harold's Club held on, Harold Smith played for stakes that were much smaller than what he played for in the 40s and 50s. I dealt blackjack to him at Harris Casino during the summer of 1985, my first year in the industry. And the very first time he was at my table, he said exactly one word to me in a 40-minute gaming stint when he tossed a crumpled $20 bill at the table and said, ones. Eventually, on subsequent visits, he was more civil with me, and I pumped him for stories when he hit my table. He even smiled once. He passed away on October 23, 1985, and I'm lucky to have talked with him at all. I do have a few of the original family photos and frames from the 50s that you saw on earlier slides, and a few others that I'm keeping for myself. Harold Smith, he was one of a kind. As revenues at Reno Casinos plummeted in the 1980s, Harold's club struggled to make payroll, and although on the chopping block for several years, there were few buyers. When a New Jersey group took interest, there was some hope, but the deal fell through in 94. In 1995, the club was shuttered, joining other originally famous clubs like the Mapes, Riverside, Money Tree, Silver Spur, Onslow, Eddie's Fabulous 50s, and even the Sahara Reno as casualties. Later, the Flamingo, Nevada Club, Horseshoe, and Comstock were lost to history. But Reno marches on, even as the once mighty Harris Casino Reno fell just a few years ago. Thanks for watching Nevada Gaming History's look at Harold's Club. If you ever want more information, you can check out our website at www.nevadagaminghistory.com. And if you'd like to hold something in your hands or read on Kindle, you can pick up one of our books. The one shown is Nevada's Golden Age of Gambling with stories about clubs all over the state. But there's a lot on Reno 
and much more on Harold's Club. Thanks for watching.